Hey everybody, final thoughts, time for Journey Adventure Quest. Before I get to that, please remember this is a paid Kickstarter preview. And with that out of the way, oh my goodness, I love this game. It's adorable. Um, and it's so much more than I thought. When I read the rules, I thought, okay, this sounds like a solid, well-designed, card-drafting set collection game with a nicely implemented uh, fantasy milieu and a nice satisfying progression because everything compounds. Whenever you get a new piece of equipment, it supplements the old piece of equipment. And sometimes, you know, it takes care of its weaknesses or builds on its strengths and all that. And I thought, that all sounds lovely. Seems like it'll be a nice little package. Sure, let's give it a try. And then Jen and I got to the table and, oh my gosh, this game is so much more than some of its parts. It is just a blast. And, I mean, I thought my main issue with it was going to be that it is kind of on the lighter side. Uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, it, it, this is a card drafting game. So I thought, well, is this going to be more um, Seven Wonders level of depth and complexity or is it going to be more Sushi Go? And the thing is, it's kind of in between. It's definitely got more going on because in any given game, at any given time, you have got seven different metrics that you are drafting cards for, that you are trying to set collect for. Your three different um, you know, personal adventures, each of which generally has multiple metrics, so you might have multiples off of those. There's the three, um, oh, what do you call them, the quests. So we've got our adventures, we've got our quests, and then we've got whatever we're fighting for with the monster as well. And so, in a two-player game, you see there are eight cards out here. One of them face down, seven face up, and you're like, ah. I, I, I understand why I don't want that one. I want that one. I, I, oh, and I can see... Now, of course, you have no idea what my adventure cards are, so you don't know what my secret goals are, but you know we are competing for these other public ones, and you better make sure I don't get that. And if I'm really paying attention, if I notice you keep getting darkness cards over and over and over again... I might suspect that you have some adventures that take you on the dark side. So I could be looking for that as well. And um, so there's a lot that goes into the draft. And now, while personally I would have been preferred, I would have enjoyed if they have, for a two-player game, had implemented a, 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 you know, still the whole, oh, look, I've got several cards. I'm going to keep one and hand the rest around. There's a lot of ways games have done that over the years, uh, you know, to emulate a third player in different ways. Or, um, you know, hey, I'm, I'm keeping one, I'm trashing one, I'm drawing one. That was, uh, you know, something something for Among the Stars. What they did here is a two-player game I think works totally fine. This is a Field of Green style draft where, okay, there's all these. There's a little bit of the unknown with the one that you never know. You could get very lucky, you could get very unlucky, but hey, even if you get unlucky and it turns out to be terrible for you, you can always just trash it for two coins. And um, I like it. I, I very much enjoyed the draft and uh, no real complaints. I don't think there's a compromise there in terms of two players. It's just a different feel with a lot more public information. So much so more that Jen and I, we didn't even bother placing them face down because we didn't want Want to go down there right okay i saw you take that let me try to remember how much defense do you have because we're fighting for defense right now and i saw you just got a negative one defense and for us that the two-player game if for players who are hardcore and trying to get every advantage they can it introduces a memory element that wouldn't be there at higher player counts i'm not crazy about that but hey simple to slow solution just play them face up so players can just compare as they go um and that and that's fine so and of course there is the one that makes the one that's face down even more valuable because nobody knows knows what it is, which of course is the way it works in a normal game with a higher player count. Um, so anyway, so I like the draft. I would love to try it with a different, with the traditional style of draft. Maybe someday I'll get to play it at a higher player count because I think it'll work great. And this goes up to a high player count. It's like five or six, if I recall correctly. You can hit that eye in the top right corner screen and go check out the Kickstarter page because I don't remember exactly how much. But anyway, so I like the two player draft and I like the story that's told here and I especially like this. This is so much more engaging because often cards will want to be drafted at a specific time. Not just first, oh, I want to grab that, but oh no. If I wait and grab it at noon, it'll be even more valuable. And since I'm first in turn order, although again, at higher player counts, there is no turn order. Everything's resolved simultaneously. Um, so you, you, you get that extra level complexity. Or the fact that, okay, I want that, but if I take it, I don't have any money. So I've got to wait. I've got to take another card solely so I can trash that card so I'll be able to get it. But if I don't grab that now, will you grab it? And so Again, Jen and I found, because we could see each other's cards, we could, okay, I bet, you probably don't value that. You probably, I'm pretty safe leaving that on the side. I'll go for, oh no, you took it anyway. So, again, very fun. Um, again, and if you're, if you're going to play this as a two-player game, I would suggest just play the cards face up, except for the mystery one, because why do you, why, who wants that, all that memory stuff? Okay, um, another thing. So while I'm talking about tweaks I would make to this game, Officially, the rules say you play the competitive mode where all of the quest cards are, hey, there's a first and a second place, and you get to add the, uh, what do you call them? The, 
loot. Or you play non-competitive mode, which means... I Now, I prefer this. I think, especially at a lower player count game... Where is it? Oh, uh, that... This jack-of-all-trades is better than this jack-of-all-trades. Because in a two-player game, I'm not a fan of this. Because all I have to do is just get one piece of equipment in a two-player game, and I'm guaranteed three points. That's not the way it should be. This is obviously intended that, you know, if you're playing a four-player game, there's no way you're getting those three points if you just got one piece of equipment, because other people are competing with you. But in a two-player game, they really should have implemented, like, a third dummy player that says, oh, if you want to get second place, you have to get at least two of a given thing or whatever. They didn't do that. So for me, these work so much better in the two-player game. But the problem is, if you bring these in, then you're supposed to throw the, um, the uh, loot away. And I don't want to do that, because the loot is awesome. It's so much more fun. So for me, the best way to play this is a two-player game, play face-up, play non-competitive um, quest cards, but still play with the loot cards. And if you play with, let's call that the special Rotto variant, mwah, chef's kiss. This is delightful. I mean, don't get me wrong, like I said, it's not as heavy as some other drafting games, you know, most notably, um, you know, Seven Wonders. But on the other hand, though, man, if I were trying to teach new people how to play a card drafting game, I would so much rather play this than Seven Wonders or Sushi Go, which are really kind of, you know, the 800-pound gorillas in this space. Because those games both feature just so much minuscule and persnickety special case rules for how every single thing scores differently. And that's a real overload for new players. This one's very straightforward. Oh, that sword makes me stronger. That helmet makes me dumber. I can see what I need to be building towards. And it just works. It's so smooth and elegant. But because, like I said, there are at the very least seven things that you are drafting towards set collection at any given time means you are always getting interesting, tough, compromise-laden decisions. And I really enjoy it. Um... Honestly, I could do without the two-sided coins. They're just kind of annoying uh, because uh, you know you have. Or, or, is that you know? I mean, they are different sizes, but I never understand why publishers do that. I mean, just let me stack. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, what else? Do I have any other complaints? I, I, I did complain. My two-player complaints. I mean, but again, instantly, easily fixable. So I'm super happy with that. I would love to try this at a higher player count. Oh. And then again, I mentioned this briefly in the run-up, and I thought it would be fun, and it is. It is so delightful to stack things up and just get stronger and stronger and stronger in a given metric and say, oh, now it's my angelic crack and smoldering infernal helmet. And, you know, I mean, it just gets better and better over the course of the game. And the way that you have to think smartly, because, hey, I've got this helmet. It's going to make me dumb for the rest of the game. Until I can find another helmet, I might find a helmet that I don't even care that much about, but I'm going to take it just to get rid of that negative. Smart, smart stuff. And the fact that the monsters do it too makes them a growing threat that is, uh, you know, fun to play against too. Long story short, folks, with a couple minor provisos, I am very impressed by Jack. More so than I thought it was going to be good. I didn't realize it was going to be this much fun. And that is the preview for Journey Adventure Quest. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. Have a nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.